Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, this is taibataib.com. This is not the third time I'm trying to upload this particular video, so I don't know why this is taking me uh, so long to do. I tried it yesterday, today, earlier, and now I'm doing it again for the third time. I don't know why this is happening. It's almost like odd. I'm, I'm, I'm like, why is this giving me such a hard time? And it's giving me a hard time not because I haven't gotten the content done, but, but I'm trying to like encode it and upload it, and it just freezes. So I don't know what the problem is, but uh, uh, two days ago I was praying, and as I was praying, I, um, Jeremiah 23 was impressed on my mind, and I, it came to my mind, so I kind of, I kind of was like, okay, I need to read uh, Jeremiah 23. So as I read it, I became very convicted, because, I mean, the prophet basically issues a warning to his contemporaries, and this warning is good for the men of God today is so relevant to our times so i wanted to share that with you because i believe it's important as people of god to be warned and to be um called to account and to be held accountable especially if you have a sphere of influence where people listen to you then you need to to pay attention because when we handle the word of god we have to handle it with extreme care we have to be careful how we read it we have to be careful how we interpret it because people that are listening if you're influencing them and you do it the wrong way, God is going to hold you accountable. So a lot of people say, God told me to, God told me to do this. God told me Then you use God's name so loosely. And we have to be very careful when we say things like this. So these passages uh, is going to address that. Okay. So it's a warning. Uh, so what I'm going to do is usually I read uh the, the 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 passage and i do i have like my google slides and i have like all these points that i want to make i'm not going to do it like this today i'm just going to let the word of god i'm um, being read by somebody else because my diction is not is not where it needs to be so i'm gonna have a, i'm gonna have like a professional to do it so i have it on bible gateway so i'm just gonna play it and if i need to make a comment i will stop make a comment and we're gonna move on okay so let's get that done now let's go to jeremiah 23 and I'm going to start playing this. Three. Woe, Woe to the, to the shepherds, shepherds who are destroying, destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, pasture declares the Lord. Therefore, Therefore this, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, Israel says to the shepherds, to the shepherds who tend my people. Because, because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself, I myself will gather, gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and will bring them back to their pasture, where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them, and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing. I believe I need to stop here and make a comment real quick, and I'm going to do that now. So the flock is like usually fragile, okay? And the shepherd is supposed to be the one to be to protect God and tend the sheep. So a shepherd of death cares nothing about the welfare and the well-being of the, of the sheep. And he, he let it go as he let it go go astray and in the process the sheep is attacked by wolves. So Jesus somewhere asked Peter, Peter do you love me? And Peter said yes and, and Jesus tells him then feed my sheep, tend my sheep. Jesus cares very much for his sheep. So those who cause those who cause the sheep to go astray will be judged. And this is what the prophet is talking about in this case. He's saying, be, be warned, be careful, because you are tending to the sheep of God. And in our day and age, there are a lot of people that claim to be uh, um, pastors and, and preachers, and they need to be very careful because if you tend the sheep of God and you lead the sheep of God astray, you make it vulnerable to wolves. And when that happens, God himself will make sure he brings the sheep back because he cares that much for his sheep. But you, my friend, will be severely judged by the Lord. So we need to really pay attention to that. And I'm going to continue to play this. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. 
I think I need to stop here again and talk about verse 5 and 6 uh, pretty quick. Um, basically, Jeremiah was prophesying about the coming of uh, Jesus Christ and the second coming of Jesus Christ as well, I believe, if I interpret this um, passage um, correctly. The Lord came and offered uh, the true kingdom of God to those who have been chosen by, by him. And he also promised that one day he will come back again and all things in heaven and earth will be subjected under his feet. So verse 5 and 6 kind of talks about that because one day Jesus will come back again. But he already came. At this time when Jeremiah was prophesying, he hadn't come yet. So he came and he offered the kingdom of God. But then he's going to come again. And when he comes the second time, he's going to, he's going to reign as true king. Because he all things will be subjected under his feet. So someday that's going to happen. But the first coming, he already came and he died on the cross. And hey, he was our redemption. He made atonement for our sins. So um, uh, Jeremiah was talking about that and it happened. Now he's also, I think, mentioning the second coming here because Jesus is going to come. And then when he comes back the second time, everyone will bow down and all will praise his name. So let's keep going. So, so then, then the, the days, days are, are coming, coming declares the Lord. Lord. When, when people, people will no longer say, as surely as the Lord lives, who brought the Israelites up out of Egypt. But they will say, as surely as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of Israel up out of the land of the north, and out of all the countries where he had banished them. Then they will live in their own land. Concerning the prophets, my heart is broken within me. All my bones tremble. I am like a drunken man like a strong man overcome by wine because of the Lord and his holy words. I believe I need to stop here again. Verse 9. Verse 9 is very powerful. Jeremiah is saying here, concerning the prophet, my heart is broken within me. All my bones tremble. I'm like a drunken man, like a strong man overcome by wine because of the Lord and his holy words. Basically, the words of the Lord uh, are, are alive and anyone who truly hears the word of God will be shaken to his core. Just like Jeremiah was, his word is sharper than a double-edged sword. So when Jeremiah heard the word, he was trembling because he said, my heart is broken within me. Because when God speaks, his word causes people to tremble and shake because he is God. Remember, scripture says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And when Jeremiah listens to the word, it causes him to really tremble because he knows these are living words and the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. So when he heard it, it cut him to the heart. And this is what's happening here because God is about to bring his judgment. He's about to bring his warning. So let's keep going. The land is full of adulterers. Because of the curse, the land lies parched, and the pastures in the wilderness are withered. The prophets follow an evil course and use their power unjustly. Both prophet and priest are godless. Even in my temple, I find their wickedness, declares the Lord. Therefore, their path will become slippery. They will be banished to darkness, and there they will fall. I will bring disaster on them in the year they are punished, declares the Lord. Among the prophets of Samaria, I saw this repulsive thing. They prophesied by Baal and led my people Israel astray. And among the prophets of Jerusalem, I have seen something horrible. They commit adultery and live a lie. They strengthen the hands of evildoers so that not one of them turns from their wickedness. They are all like Sodom to me. The people of Jerusalem are like Gomorrah. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty says concerning the prophets. I will make them eat bitter food and drink poisoned water. Because from the prophets of Jerusalem, ungodliness has spread throughout the land. And I need to stop here again. And this is crazy. He's talking about the godlessness of the prophets, of the men of God. Okay? There are tombs that look pretty on the outside, but full of dead men's bones, like Jesus said somewhere. And these are teachers, preachers who call themselves men of God, who profane the church. Okay, They prophesy through demons, and they entice people to continue to live the wrong way. This is what Jeremiah is talking about from these like um, five verses that we just read. 
And God is about to bring his warning against those false prophets because they are the people in the pulpit speaking lies and prophesying from demons because what they preach and teach lead people astray and away from God. They entice people to do wrong. And God is about to bring his judgment. So we're going to continue from verse 16. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, The Lord says, You will have peace. And to all who follow the stubbornness of their hearts, they say, No harm will come to you. But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord? to see or to hear his word. Who has listened and heard his word? See, the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a whirlwind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purposes of his heart. In days to come, you will understand it clearly. I did not send these prophets, yet they have run with their message. I did not speak to them, Yet they have prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and would have turned them from their evil ways and from their evil deeds. Am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? I need to stop here again. And this is again very uh, straightforward. And Jeremiah was talking about this prophet and these teachers and this false prophet will give false assurance to those who are living in sin. They love to preach about the grace of God and the love of God, and they seldom talk about the holiness of God and the wrath of God. And everything they preach is from their own mind and filters. They are deluded. And so eventually, God, um, Jeremiah is saying through, um, through his words that they will be made known, that they will be exposed for who they truly are. Because they were not sent by God and their folly will be made manifest. Because if they truly were from God, their preaching would turn people away from their sin. And it, because when a true prophet speaks the word of God, they, those are convicting words. And they lead the sinner to repentance. Let's go back to the verse again and, and see verse 22. But if they had stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and would have and would have turned them from their evil ways and from their evil deeds. So when it's a prophet, a true man of God speaks the word of God, that will cause the hearers to turn away from their sins. They will either resist it and reject it and, 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 and completely turn away from it, or they will say, this is the word of God, and they will receive it with joy and say, Lord, we have sinned against you. Repent in dust and ashes. Because when a true prophet speaks, he does not entice you to continue to live in sin. He does not tell you God loves you no matter what. Yes, God loves you and he saved you so that you will turn from your sin. He doesn't love you to keep you in your sin. You see that? So a true prophet will not give you things that you want to hear to tingle your ears. Because your life remains unchanged. You go to, to school, to, 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 to church Sunday after Sunday and same thing. You keep doing the same thing. The words are not even causing any changes in you. You are being deceived and these men are preaching lies to you because they give you false assurance. It happened in Jeremiah's time. It happens today. The pulpits are filled with preachers like that that preach this kind of cheap uh, grace and, ca and cotton candy gospel that does nothing to the one who hears it but entice him to continue to live in sin. So let's keep going. Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. I have heard what the prophets say who prophesy lies in my name. They say, I had a dream, I had a dream. How long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesy the delusions of their own minds? They think the dreams they tell one another will make my people forget my name just as their ancestors forgot my name through Baal worship. Let the prophet who has a dream recount the dream, but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain, 
declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. I think I need to stop here again. So basically, a true man of God will not put up with false doctrines. Okay? And these men that are talking all these false doctrines, they delight and rely on everything else but the word of God. They love mysticism and the occult. They spend time in and talking about dreams and visions. And you, see, you will see that they seldom talk about the word of God. They don't delight in the word of God, but they rely on their own deluded minds because everything they get is from their own imagination, fantasy. So they rely so much on dreams and visions. And then they have the audacity to say, God told me because I had this dream. God told me because I have this thought that came to my mind. And they seldom preach the word of God. It's all about dreams and visions. I am not saying, please understand me, I'm not saying that God does not speak through dreams and visions. But guess what? Even if you have a dream or a vision, it will never go against the word of God. You got to go back and confirm it with the word of God. Or you have to go back and confirm it with somebody else. Say, I, I had this dream. What do you think it means? And go back to the word of God. But these people seldom delight in the word of God. So a true man of God will recognize that and will stay away as far as they can from these kind of people. Because all they focus on is their own deluded minds and their own delusions. Okay, so let's keep going. Therefore declares the Lord, I am against the prophets who steal from one another words supposedly from me. Yes, declares the Lord, I am against the prophets who wag their own tongues. And yet declare, the Lord declares. Indeed, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, declares the Lord. They tell them and lead my people astray with their reckless lies. Yet I did not send or appoint them. They do not benefit these people in the least, declares the Lord. When these people or I need to stop here for a second. And I want I want you to look at verse 29. Scripture says, Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. Basically, God's word is like a fire that breaks a rock into pieces. The word of God will undo you and will undo me and reduces us to repent in dust and ashes. See, these false prophets, they say things that God did not even speak to them. They come and lie to you. And it's a warning against them. And those that are following them, listen to the word of God. Jeremiah is speaking to his people, but this is so relevant to our day and age today. Okay? Keep listening. Prophet or priest ask you, what is the message from the Lord? Say to them, what message? I will forsake you, declares the Lord. If a prophet or a priest or anyone else claims this is a message from the Lord, I will punish them and their household. This is what each of you keeps saying to your friends and other Israelites. What is the Lord's answer? Or what has the Lord spoken? But you must not mention a message from the Lord again, because each one's word becomes their own message. So you distort the words of the living God, the Lord Almighty, our God. This is what you keep saying to a prophet, what is the Lord's answer to you? Or what has the Lord spoken? Although you claim this is a message from the Lord, this is what the Lord says. You use the words, this is a message from the Lord, even though I told you that you must not claim this is a message from the Lord. Therefore, I will surely forget you and cast you out of my presence, along with the city I gave to you and your ancestors. I will bring on you everlasting disgrace, everlasting shame that will not be forgotten. And so we stop. Now, this is it, guys. You know, people get caught up into this God told me, and they begin to feed off of that. Like, you have your own imagination, and you have these dreams that supposedly are from God, and your, your unspiritual mind puffs you up with notions and things that you've actually concocted yourself. 
And eventually the enemy loves that. So therefore he drives you away by giving you false visions and dreams. So you have to guard yourself against this kind of thing, a machination. So I will encourage you, if you are a man of God, true man of God, to focus more on living and reading the word of God. Because God says, whoever has his word, let him focus on that. Okay, so let's not so much depend on dreams and visions. I'm not saying that they don't happen. They do happen, but the word of God, the word of God is where we need to spend our time because scripture says, delight in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Let's go to Psalm 1. And I want, I want us to read Psalm 1 because this is important. So let me go to Psalm 1 and you will see why I'm saying all this here. This is so important. So let's go to Psalm number 1. The, the book, book of Psalms. Psalms. Book, book one, one Psalm. Psalm. Actually, I want a different, uh, this one. Listen. Psalms. Book one. Psalm one. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. You heard the word, the ways of the wicked leads to destruction. Basically, the psalmist is speaking about what is our primary goal in life, is to spend time in the word of God. You know, do you love the word of God? Do you love the things of God? Do you love spending time meditating on the word of God? Because the spirit of God in you loves the word of God. The spirit of truth loves the truth. Jesus says, Jesus said in, in John somewhere, he said, the spirit of truth will guide you into all the truth because he will take what, what is mine and will make it known to you and he will bring glory to the name of Jesus. So the spirit of God loves the things of God. The spirit of God in you loves the word of God. So do you have a desire for the word of God? I'm not saying that every day you get up and you, you get... I, 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 what I'm trying to say is, is there a desire for the things of God? Is there a desire for holiness? Because that's what the spirit of God does. What, what are the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Is that you? Are those fruits of the Spirit being developed in you? Or do you keep on holding on to your sin and somehow you think God loves you and therefore He doesn't care? Because God, God loves, so this is why He hates evil. Scripture says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the Scripture also says, to fear God is to hate what is evil. So do you hate your sin? Do you hate to the point where you, you come to the Lord and in dust and ashes and you repent and say, Lord, please help me because I need to overcome this sin. Or do you find pleasure in your sin to the point where even when you go on Sunday and you sing those songs and you get so emotional because the song is, is tingling your ear, you think God loves you because on that day when you sang those songs, you felt so spiritual. You see, you can deceive yourself. But if you spend time in the Word of God, if you are listening to sound doctrine, if you are listening to the word of God and not listening to false prophets and false teachers, you will know the truth and he will set you free. Because the seed of God remains in you and you cannot go on sinning. Do not listen to those false teachers. All they want is a following. They just want you in their churches. They just want you to come and give them your money. Because they have a huge congregation sometimes. I'm not saying all big churches are bad. I'm not saying all small churches are good. What I'm saying is this. Usually, people like to surround themselves with people that are going to tell them what they want to hear. And those teachers know that, so they pray on that. They pick and choose passages, and they pretty much just distort the living word of God and, and, and misquote scripture time in and time and again, and therefore they give you false hope. You may not be saved. Do you love the word of God? Do you hate your sin? Those are the things that you need to examine yourself. We are called to examine ourselves to see if you are in the faith. And you have to do that. Don't worry. Those teachers, 
their folly will be made known and they will be judged for what they have done. Because God is able to save those who belong to him. Remember Lot. He saved Lot. Okay? So I'm just telling you, be careful who you listen to. Be careful what you play in your ears because if you truly are walking in the light, you will be hated by the world, the world around you. Um, you, you, be, you will be hated because guess what? When you truly live out the truth of the gospel, people resist it. Is that you? I'm not saying go out and look for persecution, but if you truly are consistent with the truth of God, you will be persecuted one way or another. That's going to happen. So I'm just exhorting you today. Go back and read Jeremiah 23 and let the, the Holy Spirit himself illumine those words to you. Okay? Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Thank you.